Hello, and you're watching a tutorial video for the WordPress XML generator, which you can find under Tools and Create WordPress XML. Now, the first thing you need is to start by creating a new WordPress XML task by clicking on this button. But before that, I have some pre created articles from my Mass Article Creator. And if I click on copy output path, as you can see, I can just copy the output of these articles on my hard drive. Now go to the XML creator, click on new, and I just paste in the path which I copied before. Then next thing I need to do is set the XML output location, which I'll set to my desktop. Here's my task name. I need to select a start date where the post will start appearing on the blog. Because this is an XML import, you can backdate your posts. So let's say I'm going to start it from January the 1st of last year. Now I need to decide on how to distribute my posts out. One post per day. Between each post, I'm going to set a time interval between 14 to 24 days. If you have been following along, you notice that down here at the bottom, there is a step by step instruction guide message that tells you what steps you are missing. And it's telling me I must select some target blogs. So select target blogs. Here is one I set up, for example. Then I clicked on the blogs I want to generate the XML for, and they are highlighted in this pink salmon. And I just click on post to blogs to select it. Now that I've selected my target blogs and all my settings are correct, at the bottom here, you see a preview of the imported content and how they are being detected. So first of all, the title of my articles are being read from the H1 tag in the file. Now, one thing you may not know is you can click on this. It's a drop down box and there are other selections which you can make. H2, if there's a title tag, I can even use the file name. Or I can use the first line in the article. Now I'm going to go back to H1 tag. And here is a example of the body of the article that's been detected. Now, if I want to set the category by default, it's going to look for a category tag which for this article doesn't exist because I didn't enable it. These are auto tags which are generated from the title. I can also select tags, which will try and find a tag tag in the article. And you may not know this, but you can also type in your own tags like so. Same with category. I can actually just type in my categories. And on blog, this is what site it's going to generate the XML for. And post date shows me what date the article will be appearing live on the import. So you can see 1st of January, and then between 14 to 24 days later. So it's chosen 14 days, and so on and so forth for the post date. Once you are happy with all your settings, you click on Run, and you can see the generation. So now I've clicked on Run. And at the bottom here is the generation task log. So it's starting my XML generator. It said it found 10 articles to add to my XML. Then it's reading each article. This is the detected title. And it's telling me which side I've allocated the XML to. Since I've only selected one site, you see only one here. Now for each site that you select, it's going to create its own XML file. So let's have a look at this XML file. So the way to do it is to click on this here, Explore Article Folder button. This will open up your Windows Explorer. So here is the file which I created, which is the site XML. I'm going to open it in Notepad, make it slightly smaller. So this is the output. So it's an XML file. Here's my content. Now, once you've generated the XML file, for some of you that may not know how to do the import. So here is my WordPress blog. Now under tools, you see this import. You click on that and you have a list of tools which you can use to import from various sources. What you want is the import from WordPress. And before you can use it, you need to actually install the plugin. 
So I'm going to do that now. Once the plugin has been installed, you click on Run Importer. Now it tells you to select a file. Now, once you've selected the file and imported, your post will be live. There's only one thing you should be wary of, and that is the 8 megabyte file size limit. Now, this is a PHP file size limit. If you need to import thousands of blog posts, you might find your files are in the hundreds or meg. Now, to import and process such a big file, you actually need to go to your web server and edit your PHP settings to allow very large file import and to set the timeout to a very high value to allow the WordPress system to have time to process the file. If you don't make these settings, you'll run into errors where you'll do the import, you'll start the import, but midway through it'll fail with a timeout error. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, info at seocontentmachine.com.